Good morning and welcome to the second half of the year energy predictions. As I said, this would happen in yesterday's part one of the weekly message. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, I'm not going to touch too much on June since I did that yesterday, but June kind of gets off bumpy for the, all the various reasons. Mid-month, we sort of settle into something sweet and nice, and then it has a very normal feel as we near the end of the month heading into July. Now, July, holy goodness, this is one of the best energy months of the year. It is sort of January 2.0. It is the month to make your plans. It is the month to set your goals. It is the time to recalibrate for the next six months of the year. Do it, do it, do it. The energy is so vibrant, so alive. As those things you put into motion, will have such an enormous opportunity to take root. So I know a lot of times we're working against different energy patterns or it feels sluggish or difficult. And you're like, I'm slogging away, trying to get things done. I'm trying to make things happen and nothing's happening. This is the month you will see results. You will get feedback immediately. You will see pathways to your destination. And if you remember from January, this is the year of love, love rules in 2021. So, you know, if you haven't found that person, if you haven't cultivated that right relationship at work that makes you love your job or whatever, this is the time to make those shifts, to get back out there. It's a different energy and it's the best energy for the rest of the year. You're not gonna find a better make it happen energy, a better, uh, fresh start energy than July. So do it. It's just the finest, delicious energy. Oh, I can't wait. It's a good month for travel in some ways. You'll find, you know, there's a lot of confusion and conflict about what's acceptable and what's not acceptable because of COVID and everyone's point of view about that. But that set aside, it's just an awesome month for starts, new beginnings, really revamping your ideas and hopes for uh, your life for between now and the end of the year. And I want you to see this as preparation for 2022, which is going to be the year we all expected to have in 2020 and got hijacked for all the different <laughs> reasons. So look at this as your prep. We're finishing recovery uh, in the last half of the year, but in 2022, it's gonna be a normal year. I mean, normal's changed forever, but it will feel we'll be out and about we can be with one another we don't have to think so much about what the rules are but that being said get back in your projects reset your goals revamp reinvigorate oh my gosh i i'm sorry i'm excited for july for myself as well quite frankly i got a lot of things i want to get going so uh yay july now august i i august is the month of herding cats quite frankly it just feels like no matter what we do, it's like you get one over here and one takes off over there. It just feels like we're constantly trying to pull things back in, that everything keeps coming apart. And so you keep pulling it back, pulling it back, and then you have to grab it back again. So, you know, there, there can be a level of chaos and frustration that goes with August. So after this uh, robust and fascinating July, you know, August might just be a good month to go on vacation or take a trip if you can do that because it's a little challenging. The good news is, uh, on the again, towards the end of the month, as we near September and the energy shifts, things do start to come together. So I don't want you to feel like your efforts will be fruitless in August. You're just not going to feel the same turnaround time and productivity that you felt in July. So um, you can still move forward, just it's herding cats. You, you all know what that feels like, herding cats. Oh, come back, come back. <laughs> Anyhow, so uh, August is, um, you know, it's still a good month to travel, still a good month to move forward. It's just not going to be as easy as we find it in July. Now, September is a little, little strange to me because I'm feeling a very somber en energy. So, um, and it's, it's for most of the month. So when I feel this energy, I tend to get a little concerned about planetary events. 
whether it's earth, earthquake, hurricanes, floods, whatever it may be, I, I get a little concerned about that. And I'm not scanning the entire planet right now, but I am feeling like that in the United States for sure, that we are gonna feeling, be feeling somewhat sad. And there could be so many reasons for that because we have a lot going on. But, and our political climate is so, we're so disconnected from one another. You know, we forget we belong to each other and we attach to these tribal ideas politically and it's really painful. So there could also be some political events that cause, uh, cause dissension and, and that's just, it hurts. It just hurts to be separate from each other. And then if we have some planetary events or other things going on, mass shootings, um, you know, it's just a lot to digest. And I think there's a fatigue level from all of the COVID stuff that we've been um, forced to endure. And we don't have the same bandwidth to bounce back from things. Um, and so on the COVID front, we will, we are getting out of COVID, you know, and whatever your position is on vaccine or no vaccine, that really has nothing to do with my energy discussion. Uh, but we are coming to a place of more normalcy. And as we get into 22, you know, it will feel much more free and like we like it to feel. Um, but I think COVID does play a role in all of these energies and, and, and our collective fatigue. But look out for September. Um, and if it does end up being somber and whether you lose someone you love or um, you know, something unexpected does come about that feels heavy, you know, just don't resist the pattern. And the, the answer to that is always community and coming together and building bridges and, you know, wrapping your arms around each other. I mean, that's the answer. Uh, so just kind of keep your eyes open for that type of energy in September. Now, as we get into October, we're still feeling some of this planetary action around floods and hurricanes and some of that, but we get a burst of energy in October. It's not quite like July, but it is, it is a great time to uh, really put yourself back into your projects, really go back after what you want. And we see the end of the year in sight and we want to check off those things on our list. It's time to get things done. So yeah, let's, you know, let's, we can do that in October and we feel the energy and we see things come together fairly easily as, as the energy um, circulates around us in October. So I, I like uh, October a lot. I also like for the housing market, all of a sudden, it's not all of a sudden, but it's a progression. We're starting to see that purchasers are getting a little bit better shake in terms of buying properties. It's been tough for people out there to find the right opportunities, but it seems like things are coming into balance in a different way, not in a negative way for the market, but there are some negative corrections in 2022, which you know, we'll be fine, but it's been so um, manufactured because of stimulus this and you know, there's been so much that's uh, not typical infusing our economy. And once those non-typical items go away and we start to stand on our own two legs again, uh, it changes the housing market in some way. So um, I like October for purchasers, not as much sellers as it has been recently, but overall it's just a good new start energy or continuation energy from those things that you set about in July, those goals you set in July. Now, November, oh man, this is all about celebration. It's like, and, and maybe again, this is a side effect of not being able to be with our family and friends last year, unless you were you know, doing it on the down low, not wanting to be a, a bad citizen, but we're in celebratory mode. Suddenly it's been unleashed. It's almost like a, a frat party, but that doesn't get out of hand. It's just, there's a lot of enthusiasm for the holidays this year, just enormous. And there's an, an unbelievable amount of travel. Uh, so uh, it's, I'm just calling November the month of celebration. I think we kind of forget about work. We kind of forget about all kinds of things. All we want to do is have a good time. And so November is the celebration month. So if you're having a party, November would be the month I choose uh, because as we get into December, you know, I made that frat party reference. 
I think some people may be overdoing it a bit as we get into December and the energy gets a little frayed, maybe a little crazy. Uh, but then again, as we head, get to the end of the month, heading into 2022, all the preparation, those of you who prepared and work towards project that you've done, it, everything feels somewhat solid. So you come into 22 on solid footing. So there is a beautiful cycle to this energy pattern. And in part because it's collective, we all have a vision about how we want our life to go. And whether we do it intentionally or unintentionally, in the collective, we all kind of work toward that. And so I think the year ends on a pretty sweet note, all in all, really ready to go into 22 in a normal. When I say normal, I say it feels more familiar. We feel free. We, we don't have as heavy a concerns. You know, and as we get through, I'm looking back at September, the September, the somber month, because I do feel like there'll be some information that comes out about the COVID origins. Uh, and, you know, is it in a lab? Is it the bats? And, and I think the more information we have in general, if it's true information, not editorializing, but true information, it does cause our system to relax. Uh, and it, it helps us put the pieces together. You know, and we can debate all day long about how it was managed poorly, greatly, whatever. It doesn't even matter. This is where we are, right? Um, but I feel like the pieces just want to fall together by the end of the year. And at, we start with July with this incredible energy and we go through these various transitions on the next six months, but we end at the end of the year, the pieces seem to fit and that's really lovely. So that gives me a lot of uh, solace and a lot of trust that, you know, there is a plan. You know, and even when things feel like you're herding cats, like in August, um, there there is something really lovely happening in the universe to ensure we get uh, to higher ground. And so if you keep your mindset to the North Star, uh, the best you can do, you're gonna vibrate at those higher frequencies as well and bring that into your experience. I hope this is helpful for you. If you like it, please subscribe, share if you think it'd be helpful to someone. And I always look forward to your comments. So have a wonderful day. Uh, take care.